I'm here with Erin Gerlach, and we are making, well, succulents in a fishbowl. And a fishbowl. <laughs> so Erin, tell me a little bit about how we're going to get started with this project. Uh, well, the first thing you need to do is pick a bowl. Um, I picked a candy bowl, and you're going to remove the top of it. We don't need that anymore. And put some plastic wrap around it to keep the bowl clean. Uh, then we will... We're going we're gonna to make these removable, um, so we're going to build a custom base for them and we're going to seat these bowls kind of like so in there, which is oh, why we use the plastic cool. wrap on it. And we will be using a synthetic modeling clay. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and to, do that. To do that, so let's get started. Glove up. Glove so up. Are you wearing gloves because you need to when you're working with chemical compounds or is it more just because you don't like to get your hands dirty? It is both. Okay. It is both. Um, so. For this one, I will have you mix up. I like it when I get to play along. So you now we have along. two different colors. We what have is... three different colors. Oh, we have three different we have colors. Three different colors, but we have some already ready for. Okay, everyone. so I'm just mixing these two balls together. Yes, yeah, so you have an A and a B. Um, so and that's what activates it, right? Because right. when it's in the jar, it's not active, and I'm trying to get this Correct. to be just one overall color. And Correct. you're mixing something too, I right? I am mixing up. It's a brown and a black to make kind of more of a woodsy color. Okay. And um, it gets mixed with a part B, um, so those are my the colors right there. And that activates it. So just so that I'm clear, these are colored because you're looking for color mixing. Like if we look at our color chart, Correct. if you wanted to find a particular color, Correct. you could figure out how to make a purple or a blue right. or whatever it is that you wanted. You got it. Okay. You got it. So um, before I get started with that, uh, to make a tin foil base, yeah. it's really easy. You just I love oh. tin foil as an armature. It's one of those things everybody has yeah. it in their cabinet. It's, it's so easy. easy to use. It's easy. So that's all we're gonna do, and and you just build it the way that um, to kind of use it as a filler. Whatever size you want, I'm sure to right. fit your bowl. So if you had a very right. small jar, yep. you'd make a smaller one, a very big one. I love that everything's custom. Yes, and you, so you're gonna use the tin foil to seat um, around your glass, however big or small you want your base, or you know bulky. Whatever, um, and you can use um, several layers if you want. Just make it firm. So that's what we'll do. And with then it that. doubles as a crown. It does double as a crown. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also like to keep a piece of plastic nearby, okay, um, just for seating it in there in case anything. the The plastic wrap on the bowl is to keep the bowl clean, but the wrap here is to keep the clay off the bowl so you can continuously reseat it. Okay. Now the thing is that you don't need to reseat anything if you want to just make everything stick together. Okay. And you don't ever have to want to worry about the base I see what you're up. saying. You so don't you want have to, glue to do it this together. step. So yep. I'm just looking at this, if I can show this for one yep. second, which is this is completely removable. Completely but removable. But what you're saying is if you didn't use the plastic wrap, then this bowl would, this would come to oh, as yes. one piece <laughs> and forever. Oh, oh, yes, forever. Okay. Isn't um, this mixed enough? It is mixed enough. You okay. want about two minutes, um, no marbling, and you want to feel heat. Heat's uh, your activation keyword. I thought this, this was warm. Yep, nope, that's that's not just your hand. Okay, I thought I, was, I thought I was just so hot that it was happening. <laughs> so, so you're gonna roll that out, I, I just, see. Yeah, I kind of just press it out. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do whatever you like. You can roll it, you can Is there a particular you thickness it. you're looking for? You know, with this, it's really easy. You don't have to make it thick. You can, however, however you like. Um, it's really custom for exactly that. Uh, so, if you're going to put a press mold on it, mm -hmm. you want it the depth of your press mold. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to work the clay around, around the base. And you're making almost it looks like a wreath or anything like that. I mean, I it feel like is. you could use this technique for a variety of things, not just a base. You correct, correct. And you could even customize a base that you already bought from the store. They have you know oh. kind of neat wood bases, or if you mm -hmm. just found something that you wanted to put a piece of glass on and go, oh, that's mm -hmm. really cool because you don't want to do this part. You could totally just use you this just wrap and use it the with same. Clay, change exactly. the color, the texture. You know, is it going to pick up the texture of the tin foil? Oh, does it, wait, the tin foil stays inside. I'm having a moment. Or do you yeah, take the, it off? Well, no, the tin foil is going to stay inside. So if inside. you take that off and you turn it upside down for everybody. Let's see what this looks like. It's not very pretty, but you could use more right. clay underneath and put that put that on after it's all cured because oh. it does adhere to itself in any stage of setup, okay. which is super helpful when you want to work in stages yeah. and you hear kids bother you or your husband <laughs> comes in or something. Or, or the, the phone comes rings, through you know, or whatever. Knows. Yes. 
So um, now the clay is on the bowl, mm -hmm. uh, and so this is a hard piece okay. of what we're going to do. So this is actually the same compound, this is just, this is dry. This is a silicone compound. I, okay. I, I actually cast this off of an actual tree in my yard, and so we're just going to, cool. yeah. Uh, so you basically made a custom mold out of silicone yep. from a tree in from a your tree yard. In my yard yep. So it's almost now we're making a tree base for our succulents, which is so perfect. We are doing exactly I that. So that. I just get this wet. You could use mm -hmm. a solvent. You could use water. Um, I really favor using uh, like a cooking spray to just mm. spray your mold because it's just real fast, easy release. So we're just gonna take this and wait. Would your mold become glued to that if you didn't use a release agent? Um, as long as it's flexible, it will. Not. So okay. we're just going to go around this a little bit. That's amazing how you can just make something look like bark and you're not even paying attention like if it's overlapping or if there's any no, problems. No, that's kind of the beauty of using something that's a bark, but you could use any kind of a pattern, any kind so of a cool. press mold or stamp, anything like that. So now that I have this kind of on here, mm -hmm. um, one of the, what you'll want to do is you'll want to put your plastic down. Yep because I have the clay on the edge, and you're gonna wanna seat it in there, however you want. If you want it at side, ah. if you want it just standing up, like some of these other pieces are standing up over so here. So you're saying that you're pushing it down. Yep, that's however, what you're however you want it. So for this one, we're gonna mm -hmm. make it on its side, because that's kind of fun. And that's gonna cause the clay to flatten in certain areas and accommodate you, the exact shape of your you bowl. You could leave it just like this. You don't have to remove it, because the clay is not gonna stick to plastic. Ah. So, um, there you go. So you peel it Super up and it'll cool. be a little shiny in there and that's good, mm -hmm. that's fine. Um, and so now we are going to decorate. We are gonna decorate and for that we are gonna use some crushed amethyst rock. You could use anything you like though to embellish mm -hmm. it. You don't have to embellish it. We'll put this right here so yep. you can do the fun part. Oh good, I like doing the fun part. Um, and I'm gonna roll this out. We're gonna so now it's time to remove the plastic because yeah, we don't need to protect that bowl anymore. Yeah, let's just take that off. Okay. And so now we're going to... And I see that you now have matched the color of the clay to the amethyst. So I I'm did. assuming that if you were going to use something that was like orange, right. you'd want to mix up an orange color or you, something like you that. You could mix up whatever color you like. And so for this, this is going to be kind of fun. This totally makes me think of like so many things that you could do by being able to like embed these jewels. I'm immediately thinking of like all sorts of wands and magic fairy stuff and oh, going yeah. to like princessy kind of stuff that would be you really fun it. to do. You got it. So let's add that amethyst. Yes. We're gonna salt it. I'll let okay, you do so that all others. I'm gonna do now is just sort of rub it in here and it's gonna yeah. pick up a bunch of these stones, yeah. right? Just like that, that's just so like that. cool. And Perfect. I can keep embedding it. And once it dries, it's permanent, right? Correct. And you can, of course, press them in and do anything custom right. there that you want. So what are the next steps? So you could then just continue to embellish it. Mm -hmm. um, this can get wet, so you don't have a problem with cleaning or anything like that, which is why we make them removable. Mm -hmm. um, but you could you know, add press molds and you know, add some extra embellishments on it. You can buy things from the store and so stick it directly cute. into the clay. Um, and then you could even burnish it with some uh, mica powders. For even a little bit more shine, yep. which I really like. And if we look at some of the finished ones that you have, I mean, talk about shine. <laughs> the coins on this are so cool. That octopus is yeah. just amazing. You All can of those sculpt things. with it. Um, so mm -hmm. that's the other fun part. You don't have to just use press molds. Well, I love this one with the shells too. I think that that base is amazing. You could fill it with water. You could even put a fish back in there, I suppose, you right? You can put a fish back in any of them, actually. Which would be so cool. And, you know, we talked about princesses and <laughs> glitter, and look at that one right up front. The folds in the fabric, I mean, it looks like it's sitting on fabric. Yep. I can't believe it's clay. You've got it is. mad sculpting skills, girl. Uh, thank you. And then, of course, this one you've put an LED light in, which yes. I think is so cool. That totally looks like a fishbowl to me, but with amazing feet that feel like fantasy or gothic or something they like that. They were cast off of a piece of furniture at so an antique cool. store. That is so cool. And yeah. now you told me that we actually get to put the succulents in, which I'm we super do. excited about. We so. do. So start with your dirt. And okay, now do business. I tip this or you do I just throw it totally in? You can take that totally off however you want. Okay. You just dump throw that some, in there. Wow, this is technical yeah. so far. Technical I'm ready. so far. Now put it how you want it and then... Um, Throw we'll a succulent in there. So cute. Here you go. The succulent in there. And look just how like great that. that is. You have your own little terrarium. I love you it. Do. Thank you so much, Erin. This was fantastic. Thank you.